And how's it going guys, Joshua Lefebvre here, live from LA. And in this video, we're gonna be hearing from one of my favorite people. I call him my equipment mentor, John Ross. This video is one of three in a video series called Learning Exposure with John Ross. But first, of course, we're gonna talk about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning, they also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. John is the one person that I go to when I have a technical production question of any kind. He is the sole reason that I even have the camera that's filming me right now, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. He runs an incredible production company called Subplot Entertainment. You guys gotta hire his crew. Now let's take a quick drive down the 101, down into the San Fernando Valley, where our bro Devante has allowed us to shoot at his casa. Thanks, Devante. John, the floor is yours. Stop me if this sounds familiar. You've just picked up a new photo or video camera, you're looking at the settings, and you're not sure what any of them do. So you set it to auto exposure and you think to yourself, good enough, but it's not. When I got my first DSLR, the Canon 60D 10 years ago, this is exactly how I shot with it. Until I ran into situations where the auto exposure kind of messed me up. Like for example, in high dynamic range scenarios where you have something really bright and something really dark all in the same shot. I didn't really know how to fully maximize my camera for creative uses and I didn't know how to shoot in like low light situations. But trust me, after you've learned the fundamentals of exposure, you'll unlock the full potential of any camera, whether it be photo, video, film, or digital. So let's start at the top. ISO. What is ISO? What does it do? ISO actually stands for International Organization for Standardization. Why does it stand for that? I don't really know. Honestly, it's very hard to remember. And really, that's just the name of the business that determines these standards. And you don't really need to know that anyway. Changing the ISO in your camera changes your camera's sensitivity to light. The higher the ISO number, the better your camera does in low light. Basically, if something is too bright, make your ISO lower. If something is too dark, make your ISO higher. Simple, right? So a higher ISO leads to a brighter image, right? So that means I should always be shooting with a higher ISO. Well, no. There are a few things to keep in mind when changing the ISO in your camera. What raising the ISO does actually digitally increases your camera's sensitivity to light. So that can actually lead to noise and grain appearing in your image. Some cameras have really large and sensitive sensors and actually implement really good noise reduction technology so that they see really well in low light. But even then, if you zoom in into the image and really look, you're gonna see things like artifacting or smearing because of too much noise reductions. Even if you think your image looks clean, if you just look a little deeper, you can start seeing where the image might fall apart. Using different ISOs will also impact the overall dynamic range of your camera, which means it will hinder the details that your camera can capture from the darkest points to the brightest points of the image. Almost all cameras nowadays have what are called native ISOs, which is basically the optimum ISO that you should be using to get the most image quality out of your sensor. Cinematographers will generally lock their ISO to the camera's native ISO and then compensate the exposure with other means such as shutter or f-stop. As a rule of thumb, it's probably a good idea to know what limits your camera has in terms of ISO. A good way to test this is to put a lens cap in front of your lens and start raising the ISO in increments and just seeing where the noise comes in. Doing this method, you should be able to find out what the highest level of ISO you can push your camera to while still achieving a nice looking image. Some cameras even have two native ISOs, meaning that they have two peak performance ISOs that you can choose between. For example, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K has a native ISO of 400 and 3200, meaning that it's actually a lot more capable of getting clean images at high ISOs because it has a native ISO in the 3200 range. Cameras nowadays can practically see in the dark, leaving many creative options for photographers and filmmakers alike. Knowing the limits of these essential tools will only make sure that you can achieve the best image possible. That's basically what ISO is, so be sure to check out the other videos in this series covering shutter, aperture, and other exposing methods. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much, John. You are so freaking talented. You can check out John's Instagram here. 
and his website here. And remember, you got to check out all of the videos in this exposure series. All the links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I actually have two additional videos that you've got to watch. And remember to get your free month of Envato Elements by clicking the link below in the description. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.